Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of Investing.com and CMS Trader, and welcome to our class on Japanese candlesticks. Now, tonight's class is sponsored by CMS Capital Markets Traders, one of the world's leading platform providers for CFD and Forex trading. If you want, <clears throat> while we're in class, <coughs> you can go to www.cmstrader.com and sign up for a demo account and follow along using their advanced charts and the candlesticks on their charts. So tonight we're going to be discussing candlesticks. But before we get started, I've got to tell you that CMS Trader is a regulated provider, so I therefore have to give you a risk warning. Trading Forex, CFDs, and spread bets on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all traders. You may lose more than your initial investment and could be required to deposit additional funds. Please ensure you fully understand the risks and take care to manage your exposure. Now, as I said, if you go to www.cmstrader.com and just click on the buy or the sell button, and all you have to do is pick a, uh, put in your email address and pick a password, and you'll have a demo account right on the spot, and you'll be able to use their advanced charts to follow along tonight's class on candlesticks. And they are a great provider. They have all kinds of educational services. There's no conflict of interest between broker and trader. There's no dealer intervention. They're also regulated, so you know all of your funds are safe and secure. They give you free daily signals, unlimited access to all of their platforms, free daily market updates and technical analysis, and you get extremely fast execution. And like I said, you can use the charts right on cmstrader.com to follow along as we talk about candlesticks tonight. Now, also tonight's class is being recorded. So please don't send me a message and ask. I'm telling you now, the class is being recorded. You can access this class in about 24 hours if you want to watch the recorded version at www.investing.com you know where you went and signed up for the class go up to the education tab and then go on to webinars in demand and you'll see all of our webinars recorded and available to you right there but you have to give this about 24 hours to be in place so remember tonight's class is recorded and you will have access to it we no longer send out links or emails about it just go to www.investing.com click on the education tab and then go on webinars on demand also go to www.cmstrader.com and open a demo account and follow along with us tonight now candlesticks have become one of the most popular charting systems since the development of online trading and all of the new computerized well today we use HTML charts or Java charts. When I started trading 40 years ago, we all knew about candlesticks, but nobody knew, used them because you had to draw them by hand and they were time consuming. But don't misunderstand me, they've been around this since the 17th century. There were those people who, when I first started trading, they specialized in candlesticks and they would sit there all day drawing their candlesticks on their charts, but the whole world moved slower 40 years ago. And the markets moved slower because even though I use bar charts, I still had to draw the bars on the chart because all of our charting was done by hand. But with the growth of online trading and computerized charts, we can now do candlesticks as quickly as we can do bar charts or line charts. Now, candlesticks were developed in the 17th century and were used by rice traders for many years to track prices of rice going up and down. Now, they were later introduced to the you know, Western markets and a lot of traders specialize in them. And what the biggest problem I find with online trading and candlesticks is too many traders just assume the reds and the greens are telling you something and don't understand that this is a complex trading or charting system that you have to learn and it's not really about the reds and the greens. It's about what one candlestick is telling you in relationship to the next candlestick and the previous candlestick. Now, each candlestick 
represents a data set of the complete price action during the selected time frame. So if you're, you're using a 15-minute chart, there's one candlestick put on that chart every 15 minutes. If you're using a one-hour chart, there's one candlestick that encompasses all the trading for that one hour. If you're using a one-day chart, it's all the action that took place in that one day. One week, one month, so on and so forth. The time frame can be anywhere from a few minutes to a month. Now, the actually the main body of the candlestick, whether it's red or green, black or white, or if you like purple and pink, you can make yours purple and pink. Red and green has just become the standard format. But back in the old days, when we did them by hand and penciled them in, they were black and white. And all these tell you is bearish and bullish. So as long as you know what color you're using for bearish and what color you're using for bullish, you can use pink and purple, orange and, and, and yellow, whatever you decide. Because the new charts allow you to set your own color choices. Now, the actual main body of the candle represents the relationship between the open and the closed price for the period you've selected. The upper wick, which is the wick of the candle, sometimes called the shadow, represents the high, and the lower wick represents the low for that period. So it's pretty easy. When we draw a candlestick on a chart, what we do is we draw a line across at the open, we draw a line across at the close. We put a dot at the highest price the candle got, the price got to in that time frame. And a dot that that price got, the lowest price that got to. We then connect the opens to the close. And that gives us what's called the body of the candle. We connect the body to the high and the low points with a line. I'm sorry, my lines aren't going too straight here. So we have the open and the close, the high, the low. We connect this together here for the body. And then we draw from the body to the low a line and a body from the, to the high. And that tells us, and this portion here is called the wick or the shadow. This portion here is called the body. And this portion down here is called the wick or the shadow. Now, if the price went from the up, from the open to the close, that's all we're talking about, from the open of that period to the end of that period, if the price moved up, in other words, you stepped up the ladder, you would color in that candle with green or whatever you're using for the bullish color. If the price came down from the open to the close, you would then color it in with red or a bearish signal. So it all is a matter of where the price moves. We don't care what it did in between. We only care where it is between these two lines here, the open and the close. That's it. If, it's high, if the close is higher than the open, it's a bearish, a bullish. If it is the, the close is lower than the if the close is lower than the open, it's bearish. So in other words, if you step up the ladder or step down the ladder in that time session. So you have the body, the wick, and the green or the red bullish or bearish color. And this is what builds or you use to build a candle. It's not all that complicated. Basically, it's a bar chart or an OHLC, because it contains the open, the high, the low, and the close. Because that's the easiest part of, the, of candlesticks. So what does the size and the shape of the candle tell you? Okay. So now there are general interpretations you have. Before we look at the candlesticks actually on a chart, and before we try to get trading signals, Candlesticks tell us a story. And the most important story any of us could want to tell is who is in control of the marketplace. And there are only six variations of the plays that can happen. 
So if we use this, or I give you an analogy to the battle between two football teams, we can call one team the Bulls and one team the Bears. Okay, And each team has the ball over a period of time. Okay. During that period of time, we have to learn who was in charge, who controlled the ball. So we have six different out possible outcomes. The first is a large or a, a, a fairly decent sized body okay. and a bit of a, a high and a low. Okay, This is done in a bullish color, which is when it was black and white, was white. So this tells us that the bulls dominated the session and continued to have, have control of the game. So in that trading session, whether it's 15 minutes or one day or one hour, that's who controlled it. You can also imagine it as a tug of war. You have one team on the set one side of the river, then another team on the other side of the river pulling a rope through, and this is a tug back and forth. Well, in this session, the bulls tug harder than the bears, and they controlled the session. So a long white candle indicates that the bulls controlled the ball for most of the game. But then we have the exact opposite of that. We have number two. That's just the exact opposite. It tells you the Bears controlled the ball for most of the game. And this is very important because when you understand who's controlling the market, at that moment, you can make smart decisions. Now, these are bodies that have a normal candle. So we don't care if it's this big or this big. It could be that big. It's just what the body tells. Now we go down to when it has a very small body. That means there's been very little movement between the open and the close. And in this case, we don't care whether it's the bulls or the bears. We don't care if it's a black or a white. Because when we see that there's two equi sized wicks and the bodies are very small, this indicates that neither team could move the ball and prices finished pretty much where they started. Now, in example number four, we had that same indecision, okay, between the open and the close, whether it be bullish or bearish. Now, at some point, the bears took advantage of something and were able to run the price down, but the bears exhausted very quickly, and that's why the open and the close re came back to, to fairly much where they were. So there was some kind of a spurt of energy, but it had no, no strength, no momentum, because it couldn't close. They couldn't hold it out to the close, and they couldn't affect the major the price movement of the, 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 the body of the candle. We, again, we have the exact opposite when we have a long wick going upward, that tells us at some point the bears dominated that for a minute or two but couldn't hold on. So they had a spurt of energy but they died out and again we ended up with an indecisive market or indecisive segment. And then number six is the same thing. The bulls tugged and they were successful for a minute or two. Then the bears tugged and they were successful for a minute or two. But by the end of the session, they were all back to where they started. Again, indecisiveness. There, nobody is dominating the factors at the moment. So these are the six possible scenarios in each candlestick. Now, this is just a little bit of a story about candlesticks. Because this just tells you, like I said, who's in control at that session. But this is not what candlesticks are about. And this is where we get into trouble. Because too many people take that little story I gave you, and then they look at the charts and they see lots of red or they see lots of green, and their human nature or their psychology, you know, our market psychology takes over, and 
When we see lots of red, we just assume down. When we see lots of green, we assume up. And unfortunately, this is not what makes up candlesticks. Candlesticks are all about interpreting the story of the relationship between the previous candle and the next candle, the current candle, and also where the, this is sitting in the current trend line. So you have to learn what each different candle is telling you, or each different size and shape of candle, and then each what each position tells you. So what we see on our screen is one of the more well-known candlestick, um, it's, not, it's not a pattern, it's a candlestick, What's the word I want? I'm sorry. It's just the shape or the, the, what you see of the candlestick. And this is called a marabuzu. A marabuzu is, whether it's a bullish marabuzu or a bearish marabuzu, have something very much in common with each other. Does anybody see it? There are no wicks. The what this tells you in a bullish marabuzu, which is you filled in with green, is that the bulls dominated the session. They took off from the open, and they ended up running up until the close. And that's why there is no wick up or down, because there was no low, and the high was the close because the bulls were still pushing the price up when the clock ticked down. In the bearish marabuzu, it's the exact opposite interpretation, meaning the same thing. So as you can see, these are candles without wicks. And depending on whether they're a candle in green or red, it's either very bullish or very bearish. The green marabuzu shows that the price pushed up after the open and closed at the highest point of the day. It was a nonstop bullish move. The, mar the, the red is the exact opposite. Now, we have to always look at when these candlesticks or these candlestick patterns develop in the relationship to the trend. A bearish marabuzu should only develop in a downtrend, and a bullish marabuzu should only develop in an uptrend. Or, the, I, I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. When we see a bullish marabuzu, it usually develops at the end of a downtrend or a sideways action to tell you that trend is over and the reverse trend is taking place. So in other words, a bullish marabuzu will appear at the end of a downtrend. When the downtrend is moving down and all of a sudden what happens is the buyers say, ah, we've hit the price we're willing to buy for, and they went in and started buying, they're telling you that that downtrend is over and they're buying and an uptrend is about to begin. If it has moved into a congestion pattern, you know, moving sideways after a downtrend, this is also when the buyers have made up their mind. A bearish marabuza will appear in a downtrend, in an uptrend or sideways movement to tell you that that uptrend is over and is moving into a downtrend. And it indicates that a very strong trend is about to take place or begin. Now, we can get the wrong marabuzu in the wrong trend because something crazy happened with the markets. But the marabuzu only tells you something when it is the right color in the right trend. And that's why you have to look at it in the trend pattern. Otherwise, the pattern could appear, but it could be a freaky thing. And maybe Mario Draghi made a speech or something happened with Donald Trump in North Korea, so the markets reacted for, you know, whether you're looking at a 15-minute period or one-hour period, and they're going to go right back to normal. So sometimes, you know, every, anything is possible in the market, but it's only a signal to you when it appears correctly in the trend. So a bullish marabuzu can mean a continuation of the existing trend or the reversal of the current trend. Similarly, a bearish marabuzu can signify the current bearish trend may intensify further or the current uptrend may reverse. Now we also get something called spinning tops. Now spinning tops look like that number three story we were telling in the candlestick pattern because 
a spinning top looks exactly like what we are looking at. It looks like a top, small body, equi-size, wicks up and down, but it can have long wicks in either direction. But it looks like a top. And what we see is when we see these, it's telling you there's tremendous indecision in the marketplace. And they are, traders are waiting for something to happen. So neither the buyers or the sellers could gain the upper hand, and it results in a standoff. After a long advance or a long white candlestick, a spinning top indicates weakness among the bulls and a potential change or interruption to the trend. And that's why you have to look at these candlestick patterns. And these are single candlestick patterns of, of just one candlestick. And you have to look at it in relationship to where it is appearing in the trend. Okay. Now we have single candlestick patterns, double candlestick patterns, and triple. Singles appear all the time. You have to be able to look at it in the position where it is in the trend to see if they tell you anything. Now, a doji is one of the most common patterns. Now, a doji looks almost like a spinning top, doesn't it? Except there should be, depending on what assets you're looking at, if you're looking at stocks that move very little, the open and the close should be exactly the same. If you're looking at currencies or commodities, where the prices have small moves and they're moving in, in thousands of a pip, a thousand of a point, they don't have to be exactly equal to the open and close, but they should be tiny differences. So what you see is this candlestick that has virtually no body. Well, that is telling you that there is a huge amount of indecision and, and indecisiveness in the markets. And Nothing is going anywhere. So neither the bulls or the bears were able to gain control, and a turning point could be developing when you see this appear in a trend. So remember, the relevance of doji depends on the preceding trend or the preceding candlestick. After an advance or a long white candlestick, a doji signals that the buying pressure is starting to weaken. So in other words, when we have a strong uptrend and we get a doji, the buyers are losing confidence in the market. But they could be just taking a breath. But if we had a long, big green or white candle preceding this, okay, and then we, we had a long candle, and then we had this doji, this is telling you that the buyers are getting ready to leave the market. So dojis indicate the forces of supply and demand are becoming more evenly matched and a change in trend is near. Doji alone are not enough to mark a reversal. You need further confirmation to be warranted, but it tells you to look out for this. So we need to look for where a doji appears in the trends. So as you can see, we've got these circled and it has to be in relationship to the trend. Okay, and we, we can then use it. So in this case, we see a very strong downtrend. We also see a beautiful trend line. And we see here in the first circle, this doji appear as price is moving back up to that trend. So it's telling you that that trend, that upward movement is about to end. It's going to move back down. So that's telling you the downtrend, the long-term downtrend is not reversing. Because remember, price moves and pushes and eases, pushes and eases, pushes and eases. So when you have your trend line here, you have the doji form, you know that push is about to come on again. So if you were looking at a retracement or reversal, you would be ready for it at that point. Now, these are known as single candlestick patterns. But we're going to go look at these more decisively, but we need to cover a few guidelines. So now that you have a basic idea of what candlesticks indicate with their bodies and their wicks, let's cut our teeth in some simple, uncomplicated chart patterns. These are fairly common and quite likely to appear before you in a normal trading session. So knowing instantly what they mean. Now, look, we've talked about the Marabuzo. We talked about the Doji. We've talked about the Evening Star. We talked about spinning tops. You know, we talked about a lot of things. The fact is, you don't have to memorize these names. 
you have to be able to recognize the pattern, the candlestick. And when you see each candlestick is telling a story. And when you see a candlestick that's telling you one of these stories, you should be able to know what it's trying to tell you and be able to make your decision. So there are a lot of things about candlestick that it is their position in the relationship to the trend and the previous and the the previous candle and the next candle and that's what's more important about candles so we've talked about spinning tops we've talked about dojis we've talked about marabuzos these are single candlestick patterns this is one candlestick alone okay. now that we also have what's known as position now, single candlesticks by themselves tell you very little. They appear a billion times a day in a chart. They just give you a little bit of insight. But those have to be used. They're not very strong indicators, and they have to be used with trends and other things. And you have to look at their positions. Now we start looking at other types of positions. So as we can see in this chart, we're looking at what's called the star position. I don't place any relevance in this at all. Okay, it's been around for a long time. Lots of people do. I don't. A star position is simply where the next candlestick looks like it is in position to the previous candlestick. The two candlesticks can be any combination of black and white. They can be dojis, hammers, shooting stars, spinning tops. What it is is the price gapped up at the open and remained higher than the previous candlestick in the opposite color. And what it appears to be is in the star position. In other words, the next candle appears to be floating above the previous candle, or in a downtrend, the flip over of the reverse. Okay. Like I said, I don't pay any attention to that. But then we have shooting stars, which are the same variation, and that just means it's got a longer up wick, and then we have the inverted hammer, which is also a single candlestick pattern, and it means it has, in a downtrend, it's called an inverted hammer, in an uptrend, it's called a shooting star. Okay. They are in the star position, and they look like stars, whether they're uptrend or downtrend. So we could spend all night talking about hammers and hanging men and everything else. I've given you some handouts and it goes over each one of these patterns. There are 16 important patterns, which is a total of 32 different candlesticks and patterns that you should be aware of. Some are more important than others, but in any of these single developments, they are where they are in relationship to the trend. Okay, so as we can see here, we had a strong downtrend, and then we had a, a uh, hammer develop, which indicated the end of that downtrend and it moved into an uptrend. Doesn't always happen that way. But again, it's in the relationship to where it was positioned in the trend, more so than where it was positioned next to the others. Now, we come to another popular one. It's one I like, it's one I trade from, and that's called the Harami. Harami in Japanese means pregnant. So if you remember this, it's very easy to, to see a harami. What it is, is the current candlestick is fully embodied in the previous candlestick. And there are all types of various explanations. I use the strictest of them all, because I only want the signals I'm getting to be very minimal, and I want them to be more correct. So what it says is the this, the next candlestick that formed is fully contained within the body of the previous candlestick. Not just the body, but including the wicks are all inside. So imagine it's like the baby inside of a pregnant woman. It's all encompassed within. And I say the rule of thumb, or my rule, is it must be the opposite color. So in other words, if we had a bearish upward move, 
we need the the, the next candle that's in the that if it forms a harami position be in the opposite color a bullet a bearish if it was a bearish previous candle this needs to be bullish just like you see in the patterns over here when it is defined like this you'll find it's less you, you, you'll cut out 50% of the bad signals. So a Harami is one of the most common candlestick patterns you'll come across. So it's important to recognize it, to understand what it means, and to understand its limitations. A Harami is a two-session reversal pattern. It's made up of two candlesticks and implies that the price is about to turn. It is indicated by a small body of the opposite color, completely contained by the body of the previous session. Now, again, this is where my definition or my explanation stands pat. But it is not essential for the two candles to be opposite colors. But this tends to give a more reliable signal. So I always say they must be opposites. So as you can see here, the body of the small black candle is completely within the confines of the previous candle. But I'll be blunt with you, a Harami doesn't always live up to its height. While it's touted as a reversal indicator, you may find yourself disappointed by its reliability. The psychology behind a Harami is that a possible change in sentiment may be happening. The small candle does not necessarily mean a strong reversal is coming. So, what have we talked about so far? Building a candlestick chart, understanding and reading the candlestick, the explanation of the candlestick shape and size, the formation of the candlestick, the position. We talked about dojis, haramis, tops, and shadows. Shadows are either the wick or it's called a shadow. We talked about the bulls and the bears, the hammers and the hanging man. That's a lot for a class. Now, I normally, this class is usually a three session class. I've sized it down for tonight. But if you go on to the investing.com, we're not finished yet, but I have to move fa forward fast. Otherwise, we won't get to the conclusion. If you go on to the education, investing.com, go to education and go to the webinars on demand, you'll actually be able to see the three classes of candlesticks one, two, and three. So you can get more in depth in those three classes. I also gave you the handouts uh, that give you all the patterns because I'm going to run right through this very, very quickly because I want to get to show you how to actually use candlesticks on a chart to, to make some trading decisions. So as I told you before, it's more than just lots of reds and greens. Now, the chart you're looking at, I didn't make up. It was made up by somebody. I, I stole it online. Uh, it just looked very good for the graphics. Because I don't talk about somebody's nickname these Lonesome Cowboys, which are single candlesticks by themselves. We talked about Marabuza, Spinning Top, Doji, Hammer, Hanging Man. Then we have the, what I call the duos. They call them two for tango. These are two candlesticks next to each other that tell you something. And then we go to the triples. These are the most important candlesticks. When they happen, and they rarely happen, they do give you a very positive piece of information. So remember, I gave you the handout. There are 16, and on those top candlesticks, there are 16 important patterns you must know. But there's a total of 32, so you also have the handout with the second level candlestick patterns, and then the explanation of what they mean. Okay. So please go through those by yourself. Because we have bullish and bearish engulfing candles. They're important to track, but they happen a lot but they tell you something very specific when they occur. We also have bullish tweezers. Bullish tweezers don't rare, very often appear. So when they do, you should take full, full alert to them because they give you a very strong reversal because there's two candles next to each other in opposite colors that both have the much longer, depending on whether an uptrend or downtrend, shadow, and they look exactly like tweezers. Now we go to the triples. These very rarely happen. So when they do, it's important. So we have three white soldiers and three black crows. They're very easy to spot because what are three white soldiers? 
in a downtrend, they are three green candles or three bullish candles all appearing consecutively and all stepping up. So in other words, you have, you can see on the example here, you have the step up, the step bigger, and the step bigger. That is telling you that that downtrend is over and we fully reversed and moved into an uptrend. The three black crows is the exact opposite. So it's very rare that we will get three pushes like that, but that's telling you that the bears have taken over this market. And especially when they're able to push it past the, the previous green candle, and it appears after a very large body green candle, and then we get three red, three red candles, it's telling that trend is over. That bull's made that final spurt. They pushed that price up, and now they're selling, booking their profit, and they're leaving the marketplace. Now, the three, upside, three inside up and three ins upside down are a little bit complicated to explain. They involve three candlesticks. When they happen, they're very good signals, but they're very complicated to explain, and most of the time you don't notice them when they're happening. But they involve one larger bullish or bearish candle with two other candles in the opposite direction that actually outweigh the previous up move. Okay. or the exact opposite in a downtrend. So I know it's a lot to remember. Okay, And you're saying, you know, I'll never be able to trade with this. I'll never be able to find them. I'll spend all day looking at charts just to see these little patterns developing. And I'm confused about all these funny names and shapes. Can't remember. Well, if you remember that each candle on a candlestick chart is just a reflection of market sentiment. It's not just the standard patterns, but the, but the keen observation. You can master the art of trading by looking at charts without ever remembering the names of the patterns. And there are many ways to trade with candlesticks. The best is in combination with other indicators such as pivot points, support, and resistance. You can trade with candles only, and I will give you some guidelines and let me set some rules, but we don't have time for that. That would be a whole class by itself. And I want to take you over to some live stuff. So, I'm going to show you a very, you know, thanks to computers today, there are very easy ways to track candlesticks. So let me pop up some charts I have up here for you. Now, we're looking at charts right now as soon as it pops up on your screen. There we go, from tradingview.com. Now, whether you're using the charts on CMS Trader, using the ones from TradingView, you're using whatever private charting service you want, most of the ones you pay for offer you scripts, or you can take a script from outside and download it onto your charts, which will, because all of these patterns can be written into computer language. So if you look right now on, on this chart, you can see all these red and greens, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, and I've just defined them by putting on a script that monitors every candlestick pattern. I've decided which ones I want to watch because you can get hundreds of them. I've decided which ones of these, these patterns are valid enough that I want to look after. I've decided how I want to see on the candlesticks, what I want the wording in, what color I want the wording, whether I want arrows or dots or whatever else. And now they're automatically being dropped on my charts. So I can use them very easily. And it doesn't matter where you're using your charts. If you just go use the free trading view and use these, and then you can see when they're popping up and just put them onto your regular charting servers. But this means you don't have to spend your time looking for them. Okay. And because there's all ways to combine candlesticks into whatever trading system you're using. You know, here I just popped up, this is gold today, and this is a simple trading system using trend lines and channels and nothing else and candlesticks to find the highs and the lows and where to put your trend lines. But there's many ways to use them. But now, thanks to computers, I'm going to take you over. And we're going to investing.com right now. And we're going to show you some very easy ways. If you go over to investing.com, which is free, all of you, and just go up here under technical analysis and look for candlestick patterns, you click on it, and what are you going to get? You're going to get a screen like we're looking at it now. Now, you can customize these depending on the asset you want to watch. 
you decide what time frames you want to look at, basically what time frames you're trading in, whether you want to see completed patterns or just an emerging pattern, whether you want to see bullish or bearish, and what level of reliability. It's like, I don't want to see the low levels, or I could just say I want to see high levels only or important levels, and I can pick the assets that I trade and want to track. I click on apply, and what do I see? I see under emerging patterns, the patterns that are appearing or developing right now it's telling me what I can expect. If I click on the line, it's going to give me a full explanation. And we can see on a five-hour chart, I've got a, a, a engulfing bearish signal for natural gas. If I click on it, it's telling me what it's recommending, what's going to happen, what we're expecting. I also see for a one-hour chart, I have a three inside up. What did they tell you about a three inside up? It's very rare that it happens. When it does, it's a very strong pattern. So you should be jumping in there to now look at natural gas and consider trading natural gas. If we look at completed patterns, we can see the pound had a pattern, just ended, and we can see when did they, what time frames they were developing on, how long ago they developed. And so we can see that we had a bullish engulfing just a, one candle ago in a 15-minute chart, so it's just finishing in crude oil. So we might want to go over and look at crude oil prices and trade them. The other way we can do this using investing.com is we simply click on our charts and then we click on candlestick patterns. We go under technical, we click on candlestick patterns. So now what we have is the euro US dollar candlestick pattern and I can click on a 15 minute chart, a half hour chart and it's going to put the little let me use, flags up here right on my live chart when there's a pattern. And let me get my marker off of here. And if I hold my marker on it, it's going to tell me exactly what happened, when it occurred, what is happening with that. So if I'm trading the Euro US dollar, I can be watching exactly what's happening there. Plus, I can customize all the chart patterns I want to see for this every asset I'm, I've got in here. So this is a chart pattern for the Euro US dollar for candlestick patterns. I can decide what I want, and we can see that on the 30-minute chart, we just had earlier a bullish engulfing. We had a doji star just an hour on the hourly chart, nine candles. That would have been nine hours ago. We had the three soldiers developed 10 hours ago on a one-hour chart. Because a one-hour chart, 10 candles ago would be 10 hours. And it's going to give us the most recent signals for the euro, U.S. dollar, as it depends, so we can watch it very closely there. So we have three different ways that we can combine candlesticks into our trading. And again, click on whatever bar we see it on. It's going to give us a full explanation, give us all the details. So now we can add this right into our everyday trading and just do it and use the charts when you're building your your trends and your support and resistance lines, and you'll be able to see the candlesticks developing right there, or just use invest in a comment. When you see something pop up here, it will then put it, you know, you can just drop it right under your chart. Or when it says, okay, we have a bullish engulfing in a 30 minute time frame, you can then go on your own charts and pull up the Euro US dollar third and find it yourself and, and circle it on your charts. Okay. Or you can just say, ah, I see it here. It's giving me a signal to trade up, down. And I'm going to go use my other indicators. So now you've been able to incorporate this into your trading systems without having to track down and find all the patterns. And so you have a cheat sheet on one side, and you get that right here. And it's now all incorporated into your trading system. And on that note, guys, I've got to say goodnight to you. I hope I give you some pointers. Come back or go back to investing.com, go to education, go to webinars on demand, and look for the three-week course or the three-part course in Candles, and we'll explain it all to you step by step. Or go to set up uh, your education with CMS Trader, and they have extensive classes in Candlesticks. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Hopefully you, you've downloaded those handouts, you know, saved them on your computer, and you'll be able to access those and use those also. Have a great night, and thank you for supporting CMS Trader and Investing.com. And remember, this class has been recorded, and you'll see it in about 24 hours under Education and Webinars on Demand at Investing.com. Good night.